Hi, Liz Winstead, co-creator of The Daily Show and founder of Abortion Access Front, or as we call it, Abortion AF. Abortion AF is a nonprofit created by activists, organizers, and a variety of showbiz types who want to use our talents and platforms to raise awareness to the erosion of abortion access and create programs that help us reclaim this fundamental right. We help connect local abortion providers and activists with their community so folks can learn how to help clinics stay open, patients access care, and reverse the current decimation of bodily autonomy. We also get into good trouble exposing the lies of the anti-abortion movement at their churches, their rallies, and their religious-based fake abortion clinics where creepy people doing some sort of medical cosplay demonize folks seeking abortion care instead of providing it. Oh yeah, and our weekly podcast, Feminist Buzzkills Live, we use facts and humor to wade through the ever-changing news in this hellscape. To learn more or to make a donation, visit aafront.org. Exposing sexist ass clowns has never been more rewarding. Wayo TV is filmed before a live studio audience being held against their will. Welcome back to Wayo.tv. Yes, hello everybody. Welcome back. Today on the show, we got Greg Goldstein, co-founder of That Funny Agency. Uh, also, you know, we talk crypto, we talk NFTs, we talk education for crypto and NFTs. We have a musical performance by the Wombats. We'll see if we get around to it. Let's head on over to the George Carlin Podcast Studio with our host, Mr. BJ Mendelson. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Wayo.tv. I'm your host, BJ Mendelson, and with me today is a longtime friend, Gregor Goldstein, and uh, now the co-founder of that funny agency that produces this very show. How are you, Greg? I'm I'm well, and 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 how are you? I, I it's I, it's odd calling you BJ. I know. I, you know I know you by your 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 real first name, but I will I will call you BJ. So everyone thinks it's Ben. It drives me crazy. Like I every time I do reach out for something, they're yeah. like, "Oh, okay, Ben." I'm like. It's not bad. Where did the Ben? Where did the Ben come from? I, I there's got to be another Ben Mendelssohn of some prominence, oh, right. and I, I think I might be getting confused with him. So, which is right. look, if, if that's what it takes to get people on the show, I am all for it. It doesn't matter, right? So I'll pretend my first name is Ben. But let me ask you: so you're yes. now co-founder of TFA? Yes. Uh, for people who are listening to this and are like, "Wait, what is TFA? Can you tell us?" So TFA is short for That Funny Agency. Uh, co-founded it with, uh, my buddy, Jared Miller. Uh, we knew each other very briefly in college and, uh, reconnected through another friend, uh, some years later, but you know, that's probably already about 20 years. Um, and, uh, yeah, Jared, uh, just kicked around the agency world for a while. Um, I'm an attorney by trade. I've represented digital agencies, uh, I've worked um, with some Fortune 500 companies on marketing and advertising internally from the from the procurement side. So uh, I got the inside scoop, uh, you know, as far as what happens inside the brands and, uh, you know, also representing an agency, more of the boring stuff, though, the paperwork and, uh, you know, the law stuff. But uh, we just had this idea a few years ago and it never really took off. And then we were just having a, a random conversation back last June. Uh, I remember standing in my kitchen and I was actually calling him just about uh, potentially moving down to where he is in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And before I could even say anything, he goes, you know, dude, like they just let a bunch of us go from, you know, the firm he was at. And I was like, sounds like a good time to start the agency, huh? And he's like, yeah. So, uh, it's kind of one of those, you know, proverbial kismet things. And, uh, so it just took off from there. He pretty much everything he'd ever wanted to do in the agency world when he thought, oh, I, if I ever had my own agency, I'd hire these people or I could do this better. Um, and so, yeah, so he's he's CEO, I'm COO. And, and uh, you know, like we say, I'm the skeleton and then he's, you know, the muscle. And, and uh, yeah, here we are, not even a year later and you know, we got about 40 folks working for us across the globe, really. And, and, uh, it's, it's, it's been crazy, but it's, it's great. That's one of the things I've loved, uh, so far is, is being able to like work with people that are not in the U S like it's, it's kind of a breath of fresh air yeah. to get, to get that, that global perspective on things like Waywo. Yeah, no, the, the global perspective is great. I mean, obviously, listen, the real reason why any companies were doing it was to cut costs, right? I mean, 
folks are cheaper offshore. But that, in my experience, has been uh, not really the best strategy because a lot of times you would need to redo the work or there are just a lot of a lot of issues that come up that actually make its hidden costs. But I mean, I'd like to say luckily, but uh, I'm not going to say luckily because I think this is really Jared's Jared's plan that he knew these real quality people uh, from over the years and distilled it down to this really select group that he likes to work with. And yeah, so they're sure they're a little, they're, they're cheaper or less expensive, shall we say, but they're awesome. Like they, right. they are, they are superstars. So it, it helps. Yeah. And there's often a bias of, you know, if they're not in the U S they're not as good. And I feel like you have quickly disproven that. Yeah, like there's oh, some yeah. Really good I mean, we and I think really like particularly I've learned a lot of this, too, is that um, in, in Eastern European countries, uh, the same way that in the U.S., maybe we have these typical, you know, paths uh, that that, uh, you know, folks will, will take uh, out of high school into college and then after college. But there is a real particularly from the development side that that we've seen. um not necessarily the creative side with the agency, but they're teaching this stuff early. You know, it's almost like a, a trade school mentality, even with this. And uh, it's, it's specialized, it's specialized knowledge. And, you know, we're, we're kind of seeing it's kind of like what you're saying that it's, it's refreshing because the folks overseas are, are better. They're, they're, they're more trained. They're, they, they've been playing for this as opposed to in the U.S. And I, I know specifically having represented a lot of folks, particularly a lot of creative people as a lawyer, you know, once they decided, OK, I'm calling it quits on, on pursuing my dream, uh, they all of them defaulted to, oh, I'll be a web designer or I'll do this, I'll do that. So it's more like by default, whereas overseas, people are choosing this as their first career and they're passionate about it. So and you could see it in the work. Yeah. For my day job, we've been seeing that with Salesforce. Like it used to be yeah. people would become an admin because they've backed up into it. Right. And now people are actually sitting out with a mindset of I'm going to be a CRM admin. So like, it sounds yeah. very, very similar. Well, let me ask you though. So you've, you've been in the entertainment business for as long as I've known you, which is about yeah, 20, I mean, 20, so 25. I mean, yeah, we met probably about 20 years ago and, you know, probably a few years before that, that, yeah, I started, um, I'd say, and I, I can tell you exactly when. It was yep. 1996. It was my uh, first internship in uh, in law school was for an entertainment law firm. So that's, that's when it started. Hey, it's me, God. I know it's been a while, and I haven't been the best dad, especially this century. Well, I was going through some shit, and you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. All you need to know is that I'm doing commercials now. I've got bills to pay too. Do you have any idea how much I just lost on crypto? A lot. A lot. And so now God needs your money. Like for real this time. Not like all those other times every Sunday. You know who else needs your money? B.J. Mendelson. So give him $5 by visiting buymeacoffee.com slash B.J. Mendelson. That website again is buymeacoffee.com slash B.J. Mendelson. Buymeacoffee.com slash B.J. Mendelson. And if you don't give B.J. your money, you and I are going to have problems. Big ones. Hi, I'm Mike Reese. I've been writing for The Simpsons for 30 years. But in my spare time, I travel. I've been to Iran, Iraq, the North Pole, the South Pole, Chernobyl. <laughs> These are my vacations, folks. I've even been to North Korea. That's the scary Korea. It's all in my new travel podcast on the Believe Network called What Am I Doing Here? It's fast, it's funny, and it's factual enough. You'll hear how I was robbed in Rio, kidnapped in Honduras, dangled from a cliff in Pakistan, and chased by a lady with a meat cleaver again in Honduras. I had a lot of problems in Honduras. Each week I visit all the world's hot spots and hell holes so you don't have to. You're welcome. Download and subscribe to What Am I Doing Here? wherever you get your podcasts.
Why? Uh, let me ask you, why entertainment law? Like, what was the attraction? Um, you know, back then it was, uh, you know, I was a frustrated musician. I played all different kinds of uh, instruments. And I don't know, I just always gravitated towards creative people. And of course, you know, why does anybody want to get into the entertainment industry? Right? Cool people, cool parties. It seems, you know, uh, it's, it, it is a seductress. Um, but I figured, yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And uh, so the interesting thing is I actually got to do what, what I thought I wanted to do, which was represent, um, you know, artists and, and particular work with, with musicians and, and uh, you know, folks that were in the music ecosystem. So I, I actually got to do what I wanted to do, but over the years, you know, I did some, I did legal work. I did some artist management, which a lot of, lawyers in the in the music industry invariably do and it just i'd like to say it wasn't all that it was fun it was a great experience but like with anything right like sometimes you, you have the whole thing hey you know find something you love and you'll never work another day in your life but then again when you see how the proverbial sausage is made and you look in you know what's really going on you're like oh man like it's like never meet your heroes right right yeah. um so w- when you see what goes on in the industry it's like ah. Uh, and I don't know, it just, after, after a while, it just, it ran its course. And, uh, you know, so fortunately I still get to work with a lot of creative people. I get to work with, uh, you know, actually our, 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 uh, operations manager, Annie, who's been a friend of mine for years. We, we met through the music scene back in the day and, you know, I represented her and, and, you know, she, she had the proverbial day job as well. She had worked in the agency world. So immediately when, when Jared and I were starting this, I'm like, I think I have somebody who will will fit the bill perfectly here. And uh, so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's really been a a great, uh, you know, magnet for, for a lot of, a lot of talented uh, creative people, which was, you know, what I've, I've been used to working with for my entire career. Let me ask you, who is your favorite client? (laughs) <laughs> who is my favorite TFA uh, was- client? <laughs> uh, well, you know what? That's that's usually a question that's easier. Is like, who's my least favorite client? Right. But right. you know, no, it's no, it's it's all they're all good, and yeah. and uh, you know, uh, who's my favorite client? <laughs> the next one, right? Yes, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, the one that keeps the lights on, right? Like yeah. Keep- so, so but tell me a little bit about your process because you, as an entertainment attorney. Yeah, I have to be able to juggle so many different things, and then now as a COO, you also have to juggle like. So, mm-hmm. so is there is there like a, a particular tool that you like to use that that keeps you organized, that keeps you on top of things? And frankly, I'd say it's for calendaring, which is extraordinarily important. Uh, I'm all online, and I'll look at my phone. I'll keep it, but. Just for for notes or or just in general, like I know we particularly at TFA we have all of these you know uh, great systems with bells and whistles and uh, I just still love a pen and a pad. Sure, and yeah. I just literally you know you don't have to turn anything on; it's just sitting there. I can make you know I actually have an iPad uh, that has a pencil feature, but I've like never use it. It's oh, really? just it's not the same, right? Yeah. So. So yeah, it's it's really about just calendaring uh, on on the, you know the uh, the computer and my phone and having that all sync and yeah, just a, just a pad and a pen. That's that's really it. No, oh, that's great. I, I'm the same way. I am drowning in like notebooks right now. I've got yeah. You know, no, I, I love it. particularly the ones that have the perforated sheets so that yes. you know if if you're done, you cross everything out, you rip it out. You, you throw it away or you take away. I'm like, I staple them together. I, you know, so right. it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I love it's, it. it's like, I, I, I think I want to go on like eBay and find like an old trapper keeper and actually keep nice. all my stuff in there. Nice. So, if you, if you yeah. find if you find a good one, that's like bright orange, let me know. <laughs> like that sure. Was- no, well, it'll probably be a used one. And it'll have like all these old, <laughs> Yep. Like garbage pail kid stickers on it or something. So hey, that I love that stuff. I absolutely love it. You would, you would not see it be a successful product today, but I, oh, I, I, I love I, that. Yeah. yeah, you would. You'd see the NFT you version. So? Ah, <laughs> that's right. I'm glad you mentioned that because we. So you and I have been talking about like yes. the, the NFT stuff and NFT contracts, mm-hmm. and I, I had a discussion with 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 Eben, which is in another episode where we talked yeah. about. 
uh, this thing. And so I'm glad I have you because I want to walk you through this and I just would love sure. to hear your thoughts on how an NFT would, would change this process. So I've got this self-published She-Hulk comic, right? Like it's a, it's, mm-hmm. it's fan fiction. It's expensive fan fiction. Let's all, let's all acknowledge that. Sure. But I can't share it with anyone on Marvel because mm-hmm. there's always that threat of, oh, well, I've seen it. And now if we did it, there's, you know, there's a threat of a lawsuit. Sure. Now, if the comic was somehow an NFT, though, mm-hmm. there would be proof of ownership that says, you know, that this was created by BJ Mendelssohn. So what we were talking about was whether or not that gets rid of the barrier of, oh, I can't look at your stuff for legal reasons because it's hard to maintain and track ownership. Well, I think, look, so we want to talk about NFTs. You got to you got to go one step back. You got to talk sure, about yeah. the blockchain, right? Uh, you know, as a decentralized ledger, everybody's using it as a buzzword. But I mean, actually, it's a clunky database yep. that people haven't figured out yet. Um, but the real attraction of, of, of the blockchain is this immutable ledger, which can be used for anything from recording financial tra- transactions, i.e. Bitcoin, which was the original uh, blockchain. You know, Bitcoin is the blockchain uh, and then all of these uh, different uses. So being able to have something like that and tracking ownership of, of anything. Right. I mean, now, obviously, it's 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 incarnation is. Um, you know, mass produced digital art. And it's, it's used more as, as, a, as an immutable database of, of, of uh, collectibles, right? Like baseball cards, like, right. like anything else, right? But the real value is when we start talking about uh, the blockchain and NFTs, right? Non-fungible tokens, you could start to tokenize and have fractional ownership in anything. It could be like, for example, with a company, instead of owning shares of stock, say they have a particular project they're working on and you can own a piece of that project, which before it's like, well, how do you do that? Right. Is it contractual and and all this other stuff? But now it's like, Hey, we'll issue you a token uh, that represents, you know, maybe you, 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 for our token holders, we take 40% of what the net cash flow is of this project. And as long as you have a token, you get that. So it's making things more, you know, accessible, fractional ownership, say, uh, you know, the Mona Lisa, all of a sudden, if, if the Louvre said, hey, we're going to we're going to sell part of it. So there'd be an NFT, right? The Mona Lisa would be an NFT. Uh, and there's an original, you can't right click and, and make a lot hmm. of them. But that would represent uh, a f- Ownership, right? You, you would have a token. You it would be like a share of stock in a company that owned the Mona Lisa, but instead you're getting a, this this uh, it's it's property, right? A, a token represents right. property, a piece of property, ownership property. And the best part is everybody can see and verify your ownership of it on the blockchain immediately. So I think NFTs are great. I think when people say NFTs, they think, oh, that's just digital art. Yeah. You know, we know it's not, but we, we haven't even scratched the surface of, of how NFTs will really revolutionize all all types of of, of commerce. Um, so but, you know, right now it's it's uh, it's it's having its moment. And listen, uh, it, it'll it'll fade uh, with respect to how it, the, the incarnation now and something else will happen. And I mean, the space is is insane, whether it's. You know, anything relating to blockchain, whether it's the NFTs, whether it's the whole concept of decentralized finance, cryptocurrencies, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're back to where we were roughly 25 years ago or, or 30 years ago when, you know, the web, the Internet and the web was taking off. So this is Rosie Tran from Rosie and BJ Save the World, a podcast asking big questions and discussing how to solve these big issues. This is a podcast for people just like you who ask Has the war on drugs been successful? Do we need universal basic income? Should we legalize sex work? Go to rosieandbjsavetheworld.com to get more confused. Commercials suck, and hopefully one day we won't need them. But until that day comes, we have bills to pay, brother. What the fuck is this copy? I I don't know, man. BJ wrote it, and I think he was high when he did it. How do you know he was high? I just, I read through it and I just have a, I don't know, man, just read it. (laughs) What kind of bills do we have to pay? Well, for starters, you wouldn't believe how much it costs to feed a super intelligent ape who wants to kill Superman? Yes. 
At first he said he would pay BJ rent, but then some asshole told the ape about squatters', squatters rights. rights? Yep. And he's a super villain, you know, so he stopped paying rent, and now we all kind of work for him? He's a terrible boss. One time he was eating some guy's face and just left the rest of him in the middle of the floor. I guess it's better than working at Amazon, though? Anyway, the apes got this cool ass set up in the basement of BJ's mom's house. You should see it. There's this kick ass pool down there. I have no idea how you get a huge pool in the basement of a small house, but he found a way. Separate lines, he found a way. Now, if only the ape could remember to take out the garbage in his office before he leaves for the weekend, everyone else does it. That includes Stephen Wheat, who works in accounting and shits out of his mouth? <laughs> anyway, that's what's going on here in Harriman, New York, home, home of the... Yeah, man, I'm pretty sure he was high, but let's just get back to it. <laughs> now, let's get back to the show! And T- so TFA is kind of putting a lot of education out there, right? In certain terms of web three and what, what you think yeah. it might look like. Yeah. The, the key at this point is, is, is education because I mean, look in general, does anybody really know what they're talking about? But right. yeah. here you have, you know, your quote unquote experts, you have a lot of, eh, listen, you have a lot of scams. You have a lot of people coming into to the space and, and uh, pump and dumps, uh, getting rich quick, you know, and a lot of, a lot of FUD uh, that comes out, uh, you know, the fear, uncertainty and doubt, that a lot of the traditional financial institutions uh, and and traditional players in in business they want to you know preserve their uh, you know their monopoly if you will on 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 uh, you know whether it's it's information whether it's uh, finance whatever it might be so yeah education is key because we can debunk a lot of myths and actually say okay great all these buzzwords. But let's actually distill it down to this is what it is. And this is, you know, how it could help, right? Everybody's going to have the FOMO. All the, you know, companies are going to be like, oh, I need to be on the blockchain. I need to have an NFT of my logo. I need to do that. And we're like, take it easy. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you what it really is, at least now. I mean, we're learning every day. It's, right, it's, of course. it's something, it's something different. So, yeah. So education in this area uh, is the key. We want to get in front of it and be able to, you know, be seen not necessarily as authorities on it, but, uh, you know, folks who understand it and can understand how that can be included in a digital strategy for, you know, any, any company in any industry, really. Now, let me ask you, what, what was the best piece of advice that you ever got? I don't, I, I can't remember somebody specifically telling me, but I know over the years folks have told me things. So the ones that come to mind are, you know, be yourself, play to your strengths. Uh, you know, they sound like platitudes, but, uh, over the years, I guess enough people have mentioned it or, you know, you've seen enough YouTube videos or, uh, you know, TED Talks or <laughs> read read a, enough self-help books that you're like, oh, OK, you know. Uh, so those those are two, I think, really right off the bat that are that are really good ones. What would you say to content creators watching this show? Like what like one piece of advice that you would give them? Tech yourself. That's a good point. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. I, I guess the, the, I'd say over the last 30 years, the unbelievable thing about uh, the web is that, you know, you, anybody can be, uh, listen, anybody can be a creator, right? Like when you talk about the concept of copyright, like as long as you put something in a tangible medium of expression, whether you're, you write something or whether you paint something or, uh, you know, you code something, you've created something. Um, and you actually have certain rights, even if you don't uh, register with the copyright office, uh, you you have rights. So, but what the web has done is you can create anywhere and literally get to every single corner of the globe, and and attempt to exploit it. Problem is, there's so much noise now, um, and yeah, you have a lot of people out there who are trying to capitalize on, oh, you know, the proverbial, we can make you a star or, you know, do we can do this. And the bottom line is just protect yourself. Don't give away anything. 
Um, you know, certainly don't give don't give away anything unless the other party has skin in the game on some level, whether it's the payment of an advance against future monies that are payable to you or anything like that. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of creators there's an insecurity there. They're like, oh, somebody really likes my stuff and this will give me the exposure I need. Well, yeah, a lot of a lot of nefarious people will prey upon that. So it's really just protect yourself is, is probably the best advice I could give. I'm going to ask you one more question on that front yes. and, then we'll, and we'll wrap up. Um, sure. one, of the, one of the things that I always have advised people um, is the advice that you gave me to start up an LLC mm-hmm. um, just to protect, to protect yourself, protect sure. your assets. Do, yeah. In 2022, is that something that creatives should still do? Uh, I, anytime that you are getting involved with a third party, uh, if, if you're, if you're a creator, um, or any business really, you, it's, it is beneficial to have, uh, an entity. Every state has their own laws with respect to, to formal corporate entities, whether they're limited liability companies, the LLCs or corporations. So yeah, if you're going to really start truly transacting with other folks, it definitely helps for a variety of reasons. Number one, legal protections, which is very important in the creative space because you have issues of originality, issues of infringement. Um, you know, uh, God forbid something happens, you don't want your personal assets at stake. So you have the layer of protection. Uh, you have tax benefits as well. And I always tell folks, any, any clients that I have on the legal side, when they say, Hey, I, I want the LLC or I want the company. One of the first things I say is, okay, let's, let's bring your accountant on board because everybody's tax situation is different. So let's see. I said, we can give you whatever you want, but let your accountant weigh in. So, uh, absolutely. If you are conducting any business, uh, you know, having the corporate form is, is, is still beneficial. Now, unfortunately in a place like New York state where we are, the LLC laws are a little onerous uh, and it costs a little bit more money. Uh, but certain industries also lend themselves more to LLCs or sometimes it's to corporations. Um, but yeah, it's always a good idea to, to consider that when you're, when you're dealing with other folks and consult a lawyer, consult an accountant, consult anybody who, you know, you, you is a trusted business advisor who you think, knows more than you do on the subject. So and watch out for legal zoom though. I've heard some, some horror stories. Yes. But, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, um, Mitch has been great. Mitch has been my accountant. Oh, you, yeah. hooked, you hooked me up with Mitch. Um, he's been my accountant for as long as I've known you now. Wow. So that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, well, what is it? I guess what, it, I guess that old saying, right. It's, it's like, you need a good doctor, uh, a creative <laughs> accountant and a forgiving priest. I yes. think is. I love that. Uh, who would you Who would you like to give a shout out to? Who would I like to give a shout out to? Well, probably I should have to give a shout out to uh, my fiance. We're getting married next Friday. Yes. Uh, Mane, uh, hello. I'm shouting out to you. You'll see this hopefully. So, uh, yeah, uh, probably who I have to. And to Ma, hi Ma. Everybody says hi Ma, right? So, and uh, I'm going to go to Disney World and all that stuff. Is right? Is that the answer we're looking for here? Yeah, it's close <laughs> enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where can we find? Where can we find you? Where can we find TFA on the web? So TFA, uh, that funny agency dot com. Um, funny is our middle name, literally. Um, and we're on LinkedIn and everywhere. We're, we're here. Uh, we're, That's right. we're, you know, to we're starting, starting to sponsor stuff. Um, you know, you'll see us on social and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe one day coming, I don't like to say coming to a theater near you, but we probably won't have any theaters. So, <laughs> you know, maybe we'll, we'll do a Netflix special or something. Man, I hope so. Well, that's our show. And uh, our, our apologies to the band. You know, we kind of just ran out of time. That's kind of the uh, that's the nature of things. It's the, it's the name of the game. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Vaped Crusaders comes out on the 20th of every month. The 20th. You can't smoke that in here. Oh, wait. What day is it now? Do I look like a fucking calendar to you? Hey, man, I don't need all the attitude and stuff you know i don't i don't need it well i don't need your face your vape or your are those air jordan 3 ogs yeah yes those are 45 hundred dollar sneakers i know they're pretty sweet yeah they are no wait i don't like you 
Don't make me like you. I'm not, man. I'm just out here. I'm just trying to relax, dude. I'm on to you, pal. You're trying to do some Jedi mindfuck bullshit. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't I don't think that's what it's called. I don't think that's the thing. You want to play mind games with me, motherfucker? All right, let's dance. <sighs> Sorry. Um, make sure to tune in to Vape Crusaders. New episodes are going to drop every month on the 20th right here on Weibo.tv. Okay, your, your, your middle name is Macho. But uh, I'm wondering if you ever cry. You ever Has a Macho Man ever cried? Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. It's okay for Macho Men to show every emotion available right there, you know, because I've cried a thousand times, I'm going to cry some more. But... I've soared with the eagles, and I've slithered with the snakes, and I've been everywhere in between. And I'm going to tell you something right now. There's one guarantee in life, and that there are no guarantees, yeah. And I mm -hmm. understand this. <laughs> yeah. Nobody likes a quitter. Nobody said life was easy, so if you get knocked down, take the standing eight count, get back up, and fight again. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, please take a minute and leave us a review. Yes, we know you're busy and every podcast asks you to do this, but there's a good reason they do. Because every time you leave a review, that review helps more people find and listen to the show. And you know what that means for you? More great episodes of Weiwo.tv. So what are you waiting for? Take out your phone and leave us a review right now before you move on to something else and forget about us. And we'll see you next time, right?